Ron Hextall continues his quite busy summer, re-signing another player, this time it's Kasper Kapanen, into a two-year deal worth $3.2 million per season, avoiding arbitration, and essentially the same price as his last contract. No pay raise, but also didn't go down, and he avoids arbitration. In my opinion, I think Kasper Kapanen wins this contract. I was thinking about this negotiation in my head. How did this go down? Because what did Kapanen have to get the same exact price as he had in his previous contract after the season he just had. Now, of course, from Ron Hextall's side, you're kind of banking on him having a bounce back year, which is possible, and I'll get into that, but it still doesn't matter because Kapanen really had a bad year. I didn't really watch much of his Toronto days, but I'm comfortable in saying this is probably his worst year of his whole career. What was it? He went like three months with no goals. You know, obviously there was a lot of unfortunate luck in there, but still the guy was not scoring. And when he's not scoring, you don't really notice him much. And you know, it was a lot of bad plays after bad plays, a lot of turnovers, a lot of just making nothing happen. Originally, I wanted the Penguins to bring back Kapanen because I don't think there's a chance he plays the exact same season he had last year going into next year. Because again, like I mentioned, that terrible stretch where he got no goals ruined his whole season. And if it wasn't for that stretch of just nothing, he would have had a decent year. Like let's say even if he just had a bad stretch, just a couple goals, couple points, like he had nothing, barely any points, no goals. And it was like over 20 plus games long. And for those who know, please explain to me why they didn't just let this go into the arbitration. I feel like it benefited the Penguins way more. Like why did they rush to get this contract? Like, am I missing something? Because I feel like arbitration would have favored the Penguins and the contract probably would have been one year, two something million dollars, you know? I just hope Kapanen gets the message. He needs to bounce back. We cannot have another year like last year of Kasper Kapanen because he's making $3.2 million and we chose him over, let's say, a Rodriguez or a Heinen. And they had way better years than Kapanen. So I feel like they chose him just based off his overall potential and what he can be. And also what they saw in him in his first year with the Penguins. Because let's not forget, two years ago, this guy was on the verge of becoming an elite player for the Penguins. Him and Malkin clicked amazing constantly producing he had 30 points in 40 games that year you know on pace for career highs and everything goals points assist i think he was on pace for 70 points 30 something goals and then you go into the next season and this is where you're like okay he has the 82 games here's where he's gonna go off especially no crosby no malkin to start the season remember last year we thought captain was gonna take some of the offensive production him and gensel you know they're gonna carry the offense for a bit i remember he had a great preseason and a great training camp he was looking good like he was fast flying around and then the season starts and it wasn't the captain we got. So that really was a letdown last year. Like it really surprised me. Maybe he got into his own head a bit too much, right? Put too much pressure on himself because in his first year, there's really, I'm not going to say there was no expectation. There was because they gave up a lot to get him, but it was more like, okay, this is a new team. They don't really know me. Let me show them what I have. And you know, he produced well. And then the following year, which was last year, it felt like maybe he had to one up himself and play even better. And maybe that's where he got into his own head and he didn't play better. He played way worse. It happens in professional sports. Players, especially younger guys, have bad years. I'm just really hoping, you know, he has a good offseason. He trains. He does all this stuff. Gets his head right because we need the captain of the first year. And if that's the case, I love the signing. 3.2 million is not that bad. Because this was a gutsy signing from Hextall. Because the bottom six is still fairly weak. You spent all your cap and more. They're over the cap right now. I'm sure maybe another move is to come. But... You spent everything on this one guy and your bottom six is still kind of weak. You need this guy to come through for you because if Kapanen does not perform, I look at that bottom six and who's going to be scoring in there. Kasper Kapanen really needs to step up and kind of carry that bottom six because who really is going to get the offensive production in there? You got to replace Rodriguez's production. You got to replace Heinen's production. And you didn't really upgrade those positions. You know, there's some wild cards in there. You have Ryan Paling, who you just acquired. Maybe one of the kids takes the jump and surprises, has a good start. But overall, it's a bunch of question marks. And, you know, the biggest one being Kasper and Kapanen. My honest assessment on Kapanen is I do think he's a good player. I like that he's coming back next year. I am a bit questioning the price of the contract, obviously. And honestly, that stretch last year where he did nothing for like two plus months, that was so obviously on him, but unfortunate. It was so much terrible luck. Like there was a times where he was just hitting posts and just breaking sticks and it was just like someone cursed him i feel like there was no chance that he was playing that bad but anyways the penguins are currently over the cap by a bit and they shouldn't be done here i remember ron hextall saying 
you know, he wasn't going to trade for any more forwards, this and that. In my opinion, you can finish here. I mean, if there's nothing available, there's nothing available. But to say that you're done, I don't know if he was bluffing or not, but usually GM, like, what does he have to gain if he's lying? You know, just say it. I'm looking for a top nine, bottom six forward. I just think trading one of our defensemen, probably Pedersen. I would prefer Dumoulin, but Pedersen has the more value. Free up that $4 million. You still have way too many defensemen and try and use that, you know, your strength right now is your D in terms of depth, not really in how good it is, but just depth. You have a lot of defensemen. Use one of them, preferably the more expensive ones, like I said, a Dumoulin or a Pedersen, and either free up your cap for a, a later trade you can make in the season or use that defenseman and trade for a forward straight up one for one. But anyways, I'd love to hear what everyone's thinking. Obviously, I know a lot of people aren't going to like this signing, but leave your thoughts in the comments. This looks like it's pretty much it for the off season. This is going to get to like that boring part where there's like nothing happening. Maybe we get lucky with another move or two. But uh, I do plan on making one more video, just kind of recapping this whole thing. Essentially, just recapping the offseason, you know, all the good stuff, trade signings. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will be catching you guys in that next video.